First, Lori, thanks for bringing me out here, helping me learn more about this topic. And thank you to all of you who have been working for our horses for years. Um, being from Montana, we're pretty isolated, and this is something uh, we're not exposed to, and I'm having trouble wrapping my brain around it. Um, we didn't set out. Okay, here we go. We didn't set out thinking that we were going to be breeders of Tennessee walkers. We bought several trail companions that were confident, good uh, walking mares who could take our young family of six into the wilderness with all of our camp gear and have an outdoor experience for three or four days. Um, but then we decided that it would be fun to have a colt, so we bred one of these mares, and of course it's a lot more fun to have two colts to watch them play together. So uh, we brought a heritage not a heritage, a foundation mare um, who was bred to a foundation stallion and she had a filly by her side. This is blue or Baron's blue gold. Um, she became the best friend of our daughter Kate when Kate was 12. That's not Kate, that's a friend who came to visit. <clears throat> Buddy became our talented, uh, very uh, mild-mannered, herd sire. This is blue with our nine-year-old niece up. And this is Buddy, who just loves attention. Um, Buddy learned at an early age. I had him stand at the, the gate as a two-year-old with me on him while he watched his big sister perform. And he was not to give stink eye or talk to any of the mares. So he learned early on um, what his expectation was, was under, when under saddle, as opposed to when he was supposed to romance the mares. This is him in the middle with his son on one side and uh, uh, the son's dam on the other side. Um, he did really well as trail pleasure. Um, if he didn't get a blue ribbon, it was because his big sister was in the class with Kate up. He was a versatility grand champion. At one show in Spokane we went to, Blue and Buddy's Dam, the foundation bred mare, um, had five get that all got blue ribbons in either trail pleasure, versatility, or um, trail obstacle. Uh, Blue was also in the ribbons. Uh, she was pretty much unbeaten in the Pacific Northwest, and when the judges came out <clears throat> from Tennessee, they'd say, you need to take that little mare back to Tennessee. So before she turned 19, we took her in 2002, before my daughter turned 19, we took her in 2002 to the International in Shelbyville. And uh, of course, after going that far, I made her be in every class possible. And my recollection is she didn't get less than a, a fourth place in any of those classes. And she won uh, Trail Pleasure Amateur Owned and Trained out of 35 uh, entries. Back then, we were told, what did we know? That you had to grow the toe out and lower the heel in the back, and we fussed with them. And uh, we had a farrier from um, the Midwest who had worked with Amish, and he knew some, something about walkers. And he used to say, Jan, Buddy and Blue are going to walk if you tie tin cans to their feet. Um, Buddy... Uh, career in the show ring ended when he got his foreleg caught in a up, two upright posts. So he's pretty much out to pasture now. Um, he's with his mares, and he's a very good daddy. Uh, when we take the mares away to foal, he walks the fence and calls to them and wonders when he can get his babies back. Um, I've watched him uh, chase wolves out of the pasture, and this winter it was fun to watch him, his tracks in the middle of the night, he jumped over the fence and chased a big cat out of the field, and the cat finally dove into the river, and Buddy came up and ate bird seed out of the feeder. Um, <laughs> So when the, uh, it's time to wean the babies, we just take the moms away and Buddy becomes their best friend. <clears throat> we haven't missed a foaling in years because we sleep in the barn. Um, all of the babies are imprinted at birth. 
and they learned that next to the milk truck were their best friend. <laughs> but we also remember herd dynamics and we make sure that they understand that we're the alpha and they're herd. All of the babies we have found, um, even when bred to the mares with the grand champions in their pedigree, hit the ground running or walking. And they have that big head nodding, overstriding way of going. And when we've bred blue to grand champion stallions, we also get that great way of walking. This is only a few of the slides. We kind of like to take pictures. So we, gr we encourage them to um, play outside and, and develop those legs. Um, Buddy's easy way of going and his um, temperament has attracted a lot of people with great mares and they're very happy with the colts that he gives them. They're um, not only gentle and if they don't have the true four beat gait, they have a stepping pace or a saddle gait, which makes people very happy because it's you know can be smoother than the four beat. <coughs> so the Tennessee Walker Colts are mild mannered, easy to be around. We turn ours out into the field where they um, will pace and trot, but they still have that big walk. We bring them in for a lot of human attention. Um, they learn to be com comfortable with people and we introduce them to all the animals on the ranch. So they grow up knowing, um, having had lots of experiences. One of the favorite things for our clients and friends to do is to bring their kids out to the ranch and of course the biggest highlight of the day is playing with the colts. The colts take it in stride. Um, this, this earth mom just blew me away. She grew up uh, with horses, so she could read horses. And when she saw our colts in the field, she let her twin one-year-old boys and her two daughters, and this is a, another little guy, just play with the horses. Um, and the horses go, okay. <laughs> So like I said, it's fun to have more than one around because they're fun to watch them interact. By the time they're um, two, three months old, they're pretty much hauled or broke. Um, anybody can lead them. They follow you anywhere they can. They're very curious, and of course, we expose them to all kinds of things. Um, we had, I think, curiosity shows a sign of intelligence. Um, they grow up loving people, <clears throat> and this is staged because I teach all of our babies to give me a hug when asked. And uh, let me tell you, that sales horses. Um, we encourage a perfect match. We want somebody who's going to buy a horse, a lifelong companion, to have a lot of experience uh, with a lot of different horses, so when they find the right one, they know it. Um, so I, I tell him to go look, but I say, before you leave, ask Tilly to give you a hug. And um, it's, like I said, it pretty much sells the horse. That horse is on its way down the road to its new forever home before long. <clears throat> when the babies are young, we ride the mothers with the babies on their side. We have a Shetland saddle that we put on so they get the idea of the girth uh, and they know what to expect when it's their turn to have a saddle on. But I think riding the mares, the, the babies see, I really believe in modeling. And um, when those babies see us up on their mothers, they go, oh, I get it. And when it's their turn, it's no big deal. So they learn about down trees and snow banks and mud holes. Um, when they're about two, we get on them and ride them in the pastures bareback for 10 or 15 minutes, maybe once or twice 
a week or a month or whatever, depending on the size of the horse. But we encourage that they <clears throat> go slow and they let their nose out um, and encourage that back end. We usually ride them alone only because it seems like they pay more attention to us than when we go with other horses. They're not distracted. Um, and as they get older, we ride them in all kinds of terrain, uh, getting them to feel their legs, uh, know where their bodies are underneath and with a person on their back. So most of our clients are interested in trail pleasure horses. They want to ride on the trails and explore. However, um, maybe 50% will pack into the mountains. So we try to make sure that all of the horses we sell to people who are interested in packing have had pack saddles on. Um, and we don't feed our mares 12 months out of the year just so we can have a baby every other year. Whenever possible, we try to get our mares to be um, trail companions also. So um, this last summer, I had four kids between the ages of eight and 10 come to visit. And of course, they wanted to ride horses on the trail like, you know, John Wayne. And though they don't know who John Wayne is, let me tell you. Um, so we were able to get them all up on horses and they had a grand experience, and our brood mares took real good care of them. Um, <clears throat> one thing I wanted to say about the my uh, interest in riding brood mares is that um, I've been impressed with how glad they are to be out and away from those small stalls with somebody bugging them all the time. And uh, I've had 16 and 18 year old brood mares that we've trained to have riders on them. And it's like we sell them to green people who want a gentle, solid mare that's got really good um, uh, footing and has seen everything, done, done ev everything. So um, that's something I, I'm trying to convince my friend up the road who has a quarter horse that, um, she needs to make her brood mare into a riding mare, and she doesn't believe it can happen. But So a few years ago, Kate, our daughter, bought another stallion. <clears throat> um, he has uh, versatility breeding on the top and um, uh, champion mares, grand champion mare on the bottom. Um, he, like Buddy, is expected to be a good old boy. He can stand tied to the hitching post without any um, uh, behavior problems, um, only when under saddle, or when, when not under saddle and asked to romance the mares is, um, he knows the difference. Uh, so with the 2008, we had probably five uh, shows that we could go to in a three hour radius from the house. When they dried up, we looked for other opportunities to be with people and our horses. And um, I think the uh, people that were at the all-breed trail obstacle competitions were impressed with what the Tennessee Walker can do. We also do um, team pinning. And I dropped a slide of Kate uh, doing uh, mounted shooting, where they have to ride through a series of balloons and shoot them. She talked her dad into buying her guns and holsters. And in the winter time, we get clients and friends out for sleigh rides. One of the favorite things people like to do is ski joring. We have to kind of watch out for the uh, weather. If the snow's too deep and too heavy, it's a lot of work. But the horses seem to really love it. They, are, they, they see it as a game, and they love getting out and experiencing the weather. Or we just take people on trail rides in, in the wintertime. And I've got a lot of friends who say, oh, it's too cold. And I go, come with me. At Christmas time, we have a party where everybody gets to take home a tree that was brought in by the horse. This obviously was a two-horse tree. 
but frequently the, hor the trees are the size that we just carry in front of us on the cannel. Um, I think in Montana especially, the shows people went to was not so much for the competition, but for the camaraderie. And uh, so about seven years ago, we started a Tennessee Walking Horse Rendezvous. And um, up to 60 people come with their horses, their camping gear, um, their food, and we have all of our meals together. We had a sort of a barn raising where people help put up this wooden tent. We have cowboy coffee and eggs and bacon and everybody eats all their meals together. Um, in the winter, or in the at nighttime, we have a big bonfire and everybody sits around. We have people from all over the Pacific Northwest. They look forward to uh, seeing each other once a year. Uh, a couple comes from Saskatchewan. Um, and we take small groups out. Everybody goes on their own way. Uh, there's a lot of public uh, forest service land out miles and miles around the place. This has been a really great way for us to keep track of our buddy babies. We like to make sure that we've found good matches for everybody and that um, if there's a little kink that we need to work out. Um, and it's also been a great uh, opportunity for other people to say, um, boy, that looks like the kind of horse that I want for my lifetime companion. We just recently sold two horses and the fellow said, um, does this include a year or a lifetime invitation to the rendezvous? My husband calls it the Janorama. So it's been fun these last 30 years to be involved with the Tennessee Walkers um, and watch the explosion of their numbers. Um, my experience is, at least in Montana, it's the breed of choice now for the baby boomers with the thousands of miles of wilderness we have, we can now explore that and come back rested and relaxed and not jarred to the bone. Um, when my daughter was probably 14, I was at a state 4-H um, meet, sitting in the stands watching her. And I heard this cowboy father, father in front of me say, look at that pretty little mare, what a funny way of going. And I know if I were sitting in that stand today, he would say, there's another Tennessee walker. Look at that smooth gait. So whether you want just a friend or someone you can hang around with, where's my hanging around with slide? Or if you want to do silly things or try something new, whether you need a trail companion or a competitor in the show ring. Whoops, that's it. That's a buddy baby as a two-year-old. Um, I think the Tennessee Walker has proven that he's willing and ready to fill those shoes, um, flat shod or bareback. Thank you.